Welcome to our seventh annual conference of the McGill University Health Center's Institute for Strategic Analysis and Innovation, better known as ISAIAH. The ISAIAH was founded in 2007 to enable the MUHC to take on a leadership role in shaping healthcare policy. Since that time, it has sought to foster constructive debate with a view to improving the policy landscape that shapes how care is provided in Canada. We start with issues that arise on the front lines of hospital care and explore policy changes that could help us face these challenges. Past activities have examined how to realize the promise of health information technology, the impact of a bifurcated Medicare system that leaves out home care, long-term care and medications, and much more. Reports from our previous work and are available on our website, the www.healthinnovationforum.org. You'll see that listed on one of the slides. The, MUIZ, the MUHC Isaiah program is led by an administrative committee that includes our CEO, Monsieur Norman Renfray, Mr. Richard Fahey, the Director of Public Affairs and Strategic Planning, Mr. Harris Poulis, General Counsel and Director of Legal Affairs, and our external partner, Susan Usher, Director of the Health Innovation Forum, and myself as the Director and Chair. Today and tomorrow, we are putting together this year's event. As we were putting together this event, we also benefited from the expertise and insights of the members of our planning committee. And as I say your names, I'd like you to please stand up, as well as the members of the administrative committee who I forgot to ask you to do that as I go through. Um, I'd just like everyone in the audience to be aware of who you are. Dr. Alain Biron, director to, assistant to the Director of Quality, Safety, and Performance. Just stay, Alain. <laughs> <laughs> stay, Alain. Dr. Sean Clark. I think Sean has not quite made it. His flight is en route maintenant from Boston, but Dr. Clark is the former director of the McGill Nursing Collaborative for Education and Innovation in Patient and Family-Centered Care, and he is now the Dean of Undergraduate Programs at Connell School of Nursing in Boston, at Boston College. Mr. Mario DiCarlo, who is a member of our Board of Directors and an executive member of the Central Users or Patients Committee of the MUHC and member of the board of the Regroupement Provincial des Comités des Usagers, the provincial committee that represents patients, or in Quebec we call them users. Uh, Dr. Carolyn Freeman, who is the physician quality champion in the Department of Quality, Patient Safety and Performance. Ms. Valerie Franchak. Val, where are you? Is she here? Okay. They're actually, I forgot to mention that uh, the Jewish General Hospital as well as Jewish Rehab are joining us by video conference simultaneously. Um, but Valerie is the Associate Director of Nursing for Mental Health, Training and Staff Development at the Jewish General Hospital and a member of our planning committee. And Mrs. Maria Jad, has Maria made it in yet? There she is. Great. And Maria is the Senior Director for Patient Engagement and Improvement at the Canadian Foundation for Healthcare Improvement, or CFI for short, CFHI for short. Thank you very much. <clears throat> patient engagement and patient and family-centered care are key organizational priorities at the McGill University Health Center. In 2013, the Board of Directors adopted the MUHC Patient Engagement Strategy, which was developed under the leadership of a senior administrator and a patient. The MUHC has committed resources to execute its deployment. We have had patient or user committees for over 20 years here in the organization on each of the six hospital sites that make up the MUHC, as well as a central patient committee. And for those of you who are here from out of province, and there are many people in the room, actually at least a third of the people in the room are from other provinces, um, just to let you know that in Quebec, patient committees were legislated um, and a long time ago, so we were really ahead of the curve on that one. And patients are also members by law of boards of directors of all healthcare institutions. We are about to go through major reorganization with our healthcare system. 
and um, we're not quite sure what will actually happen in terms of maintaining that patient voice and it's a particular concern right now to I know certainly to all the members of our MUHC patient committees and probably I can safely say that that's a concern across the province until we receive some more clarity from the Ministry of Health. In 2008, the nursing department conducted a study of nurses' perceptions of patient and family-centered care, which served as a springboard for practice improvements. And with funding support from the CFHI and others between 2010 and 15, the MUHC launched its most significant work on patient engagement, the Transforming Care at the Bedside program, with three main objectives. The first was to understand care through the eyes of patients. The second, to engage patients to partner with frontline care providers to redesign or co-design care processes using rapid cycle improvement. And third, to increase the amount of registered nurse time in direct care to better meet patient needs. A corporate priority of the MUHC, the Transforming Care at the Bedside Program, or TCAB for short, is now in its fourth wave of implementation over a four-year period, and it has been spread to 45% of our clinical areas in the six hospitals. So we have reached a tipping point with significant investments in capacity building to ensure its success. We've documented improved outcomes in quality of care, patient experience of care, staff work environment, and organizational outcomes, many of which have been sustained over time. And in the beginning part of this year, in January, the MUHC uh, received recognition as for the TCAP program as a leading practice by Accreditation Canada. Patients have been and can continue to be members on many of our committees. It's not a new phenomenon here, including our board of directors. The My Toolbox program, that's our local name for the program that was developed by Stanford on self-care management, is the MUHC's award-winning chronic disease self-management program and the only Stanford licensed program on the island of Montreal. My Toolbox is a program for patients with chronic disease designed to teach other people with chronic disease the skills they need to live well with their chronic conditions. Trained volunteers who have chronic diseases facilitate, facilitate these workshops for others. And we have a number of those trainers right here in the room, including Mario DiCarlo. We're very pleased to be able to welcome you, free of charge, this conference, and are tremendously grateful to our sponsors for making that possible. This year's gold sponsors are Roche and Boringer Ingelheim. Our silver sponsor is the McGill Nursing Collaborative, the Collaborative is a joint venture with the School of Nursing, the MUHC, and the Jewish General Hospital, which is funded by the Newton Foundation. And Susan French, would you mind standing so that we can acknowledge the generous contributions that have come from the Newton Foundation? Our bronze sponsors for this year are CFHI, IMS Brogan, CGI, and Healthcare Canada. And I'd also like to acknowledge all and thank these sponsors for their incredible generosity. Thank you very much. <laughs> Patient engagement involves all sectors of healthcare, and we are hopeful that strong partnerships between providers, associations, and private corporations will continue to emerge in this area. This year is our largest Isaiah event ever with 240 participants. And I'm proud to say that we have over 40 patients attending today. That means one in every six persons in this room is a patient. 50% would be even better, wouldn't it? But that's still a very significant percentage. So welcome, a very special welcome to those of you who are the patients in the audience or the consumers of the healthcare we are providing. As we begin this evening, I would like you to imagine a world where access to care was no longer an issue or a worry, and that same day access was available for all primary care. I'd like you to imagine a world where all transitions are seamless and well-coordinated, and we could stop monitoring 
readmission rates to hospital because they wouldn't be occurring. We're talking about unnecessary or avoidable readmission rates. Imagine a world where as consumers we could get answers to our healthcare questions and all our test results online when we wanted them and all appointments could be made that way. Imagine a world where ERs, emergency rooms only needed to see true emergencies because everyone had that same day access to primary care. I believe the statistic that we saw in the press recently with the major reorganization that's going on in, or about to occur in Quebec, it's approximately 80% of persons showing up for emergency care are levels four and five. In other words, they are not actual true emergency care and could be and should be dealt with somewhere else. Imagine a world where every CEO had the telephone numbers of patient advisors on speed dial. Imagine a world where all persons with a chronic illness received free training in self-care management led by those living with those illnesses. And then these patients came back and they provided all the training to the physicians, nurses, and other health care providers in truly responsive care. Imagine a world where all patients or all persons felt that they received care that was respectful, met their information needs, and exceeded their expectations overall. These examples are not imaginary. They actually exist in a number of places already. Our challenge now, though, is that we need to decrease the variability. Why are these things occurring in so few places? Why have they not become standard of care everywhere and commonplace? I'd like to take a minute to call out and acknowledge a patient leader in our audience today who is about to be recognized nationally for her contributions to patient safety and quality of care. Carolyn Canfield. Carolyn, would you please stand? Carolyn Canfield is the first recipient of the Canadian Patient Safety Institute's inaugural Patient Safety Champion Award, which is given to a patient or family member who's had a, a significant impact on patient safety in Canada. Bravo, Carolyn. We hope the presentations this evening and tomorrow will lead to a clear understanding of what patient engagement is and why it matters. I trust that you will leave with greater confidence to pursue initiatives that include patients as partners in the co-design of better health care. And now I will shift gears to welcome our first speaker. I'm pleased to welcome back Shalom Gluberman to the MUHC Isaiah program. In 2010, he delivered the closing address at our conference on health information technologies. He saw the technological revolution from the patient's perspective. Patients gaining power to monitor their own health conditions, to communicate with providers and with other people living with, uh, with similar conditions, to assume much more control over their health and health care. Since then, he has developed the Patients Association of Canada, which has now been renamed Patients Canada, into a real force in patient engagement, which has already demonstrated significant impact in Ontario and is spreading activities to other provinces. Shalom is philosopher in residence at Baycrest Hospital in Toronto and has been an adjunct professor at Toronto, McGill and York Universities and has served as a health system advisor in Canada and the UK. In 2005, Shalom underwent major surgery and subsequently wrote the book, My Operation, which vividly describes the gap between patient experience and institutional concerns. He started the Patients Association of Canada in 2007. Please join me in a warm welcome to Shalom. Thank you. 